हमारी आज की गेस्ट हैं फायजा नून जो के हस्तनिष्ठ में मैनेजर सिखाती हैं और हस्तनिष्ठ का हिस्सा भी है और उनकी स्टूडेंट हैं सना जो हस्तनिष्ठ की भी स्टूडेंट है खुद भी बड़ी ज़बरदस्त कल्पटर एन की ग्रेजुएट है और आर्टिस्ट भी बहुत अच्छी हैं आज की हमारी गुफ्तु जो है हम फन मसवरी के ऊपर बात करेंगे फायजा जी से और वो हमें हस्तनीस में बहुत अच्छे तरीके से पढ़ा रही हैं ना सिर्फ स्किल्स दे रही हैं उसके अलावा उसकी जो मानवीयत है वो भी साथ साथ सिखाती हैं तो आज उसी के हवाले से बात करेंगे जी फायज जी Tim, Aaj, I would like to discuss miniature painting from a different perspective. I mean, we've always talked about the actual painting process, the grammar, the language, but today I'd like to talk more about what it is. What is the process, not the product? And Islamic art, jo hai, it manifests through form, the spiritual reality of al hakaik, of the revelation. So the word makes form. and uses symbols to communicate but the art form has has is just simply a means of self expression the, the artist inspired through text communicates his interpretation series of images and this process has both an external exoteric and an internal esoteric aspect and it's this internal aspect that i would like to um go deeper into today uh the finished piece designed to be viewed by a viewer is the esoteric aspect so that in a sense is the product but what it does is it creates a dialogue between the viewer and the viewed and at the same time transforming the word into an image has a profound effect on the artist himself and this is the esoteric aspect traditional art is approached as a sacred activity always there is no star or initiator the process is very slow every step is important in the learning curve and it's so subtle that when i start a student on the simple action of just uh, sanding a pencil i can see the impatience none of them have the inclination to through the laborious process of a blade and cutting through to the lead and then taking out a certain portion of the lead and then sanding it to a very fine pencil that looks almost like a needle and then learning how to use that tool and every time i look away ultimately the the artist will pick up a normal pencil and start using it because his senses have not yet been fine tuned to the level that he can actually discern the difference between the two tools and as they work and as they get used to using the tool ultimately they are still tend to be lazy they will go back to use a normal pencil and not go back through the effort of sanding that tool every time it gets um uh, rough again because sharpening a pencil is just picking up a tool and sharpening it but when you're working in a traditional art it's not that simple so then to begin with a very very fundamental stage you learn how to prepare your tools you have to learn how to prepare your surfaces and for somebody today who's used to the instant process this is not something they like doing it's like i'm forcing them to slow down and pu- push a pause button and first get used to understanding the tools and the and care of the tools that to use and it's the hardest part as a teacher if i have to teach a traditional art i cannot inspire the student to understand that the first stage is the most important stage and i don't know sana you have been process whether you have had a similar experience that this very painful process of sitting down to sand your pencil and to do it every time your pencil gets rough again bring it back to a fine point and how to use that point uh, and i think it's the same yeah. stage when you progress from using the pencil ye yeah, uh, bilkul aapne jaise kaha aise hai how to use the paint brush yeah. because it is very different and uh, it's a very very delicate thing to work with because the lead is so fine just like a needle so agar usko hum zara si zabardasti karenge to it's going to break and you have to start all over again to shape your pencil and sand it and bring it to that fine 
फाइननेस लेवल ऑफ फाइननेस तो वो वो है और बहुत फ्रस्ट्रेटिंग होता है जब बार बार वो टूटता है और और अपना अपने आप को स्लो करना और आहिस्ता करना वो मुश्किल काम है मुश्किल काम है और शुरू में यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द नीड फॉर इट एंड यू डोंट नॉट इवन योर आई हैज नॉट यर्न लर्न टू अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस इन द क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइन दैट इज क्रिएटेड बाय वन टाइप ऑफ टूल और अनदर टाइप ऑफ टूल टू यू इट्स जस्ट अ पेंसिल एंड इट्स जस्ट मेकिंग अ मार्क एंड आई नीड टू गेट ऑन विद इट सो एट द फर्स्ट स्टेज व्हेन आई एम सिटिंग अ अ स्टूडेंट डाउन आई नीड देम टू बी एबल टू ब्रेक अवे फ्रॉम ऑल द the habits that they have formed in the past and try and approach this art with the necessary senses which are finer than your normal senses to be able to appreciate the differences and it's the same when you transit from a pencil for instance to a brush because the nature of the brush is again very different and when you're working with the squirrel's brush it is such a um rough looking instrument that you feel how am i even going to produce a line from this and how is it even going to hold any liquid let alone produce color from it so any mark that you do initially begin with even with a with a squirrel tail the brush that is used for the line work or what we call kalam in miniature painting is a very slow relationship that you develop with the tool so at the early stages it is this and then it is a training of the subtle senses getting to to understand the nature of the tool and then again when you move on to for instance color how to apply color how to mix color how to create a relationship between colors and which color to choose for what particular image what is the philosophy behind all that slow none of this comes to you intuitively instantly and and you never be able to fully understand the reasoning behind all these stages until you go through them and after after you move from color you realize that you have you think you've established the painting but now begins the finishing process which is as laborious as everything else you've been through and when you finish a painting then you have to approach the border of the painting which again is a whole stage and process in itself so it's an it's an endless journey this particular art form and it develops in you certain traits which i don't think that you realize or even um aware of when you start the process but really you realize that so much of your psychic self has evolved with the art form so many more subtle senses have come into play which you never noticed for instance tone normally people use are able to perceive three or four tones but when you start shading or toning in a miniature painting you have to be able to perceive at least seven subtle tones and this fine gradient from one tone to another requires the eye to adjust to it in the beginning your eye won't even notice the changes and they're so so um, at a almost intuitive level even just the face of a, of a uh, of a, a figure in a miniature painting sometimes is even smaller than the uh, the space on your fingertip and all you have space for is a dot or a stroke for an eye for instance or even if you're stroking eye brows into that face you can barely see the strokes that you make so it's almost like you are operating on an invisible plane and to be able to see that you need to be able to slow down to focus to move away from everything outside so that your entire concentration is the relationship between your brush and the surface that you're working on and sometimes people like to think that this won't take them 2 minutes to do a face but sometimes you think that you you'll never get it right you'll never get the nuance right of the smile you'll never get the arch of the eyebrow right and you just never satisfied in it it is these aspects of this particular art form that are hard to explain but they impact you at a very um intangible level so at an at an early stage the artist surrenders to the limitations of his skill and the nature of the material he uses until the relationship becomes intuitive so in this process he is learning patience perseverance consistency discipline and ability to move beyond the visible boundaries of his skill and his subtle senses engaging his subtle senses in such a way that he is able to create 
or rather i should say he is able to enter a space which is almost med purely meditative and the the work goes from some higher realm through his hand without his direct involvement and it's only when he sees the finished piece then he is able to realize that it was never him that was painting and this kind of um, synergy in your work is not something you can acquire simply by producing one or two paintings you need to sit down and put in a certain amount of practice like if you're working 6 to 7 hours a day and you've been working like that for 3 or 4 years you will come close to experiencing what i'm talking about because this is something this is an art form which ultimate meditative practice and it takes you where um, you would never have imagined and the only way i can say that you as an onlooker process is by looking at the quality of work that was produced in the 13th 14th 15th centuries uh past and works of art are available in museums abroad like the patsha nama in the british museum or shah nama at the met uh shah tamas shah nama at the met and you see that these paintings were produced 5 6 7 100 years ago and they are preserved in mint condition and if you look at them you wonder how it was possible for any human to have produced them and it is this this quality that only comes when the artist has reached that level where he is able to remove himself from the act and i this is ultimately what i was trying to say is this it is the process not the product what it does for the maker of that that product is much much more valuable than the product itself and i think original art is a process what we call ultimately tasqiya nafs it's a self purification process and you're always pushing the bar you're always trying to see how far can i take it how far can i finish the piece and commitment is not relevant you can spend hours and hours or lifetime on a piece sometimes and you're still never satisfied it is that inner quest for excellence that gives this this art form something that modern art i don't think has the capability of transforming the person in the same way and another factor is that most of the traditional artists who were working in ateliers had never signed their paintings so a lot of research has gone into looking at these old manuscripts and being able to ascertain certain names through a lot of research on various indicators here and there and then understanding okay this particular hand is belongs to this artist and hence it's most likely to be his work or he was present under that particular patronage of that ruler at that time but they never left their personal mark on those pieces it was never about them today it's about individualism and in the past those who who are practitioners of traditional art weren't just doing it to produce something beautiful they were doing it because it was a quest for an inner truth to understand what what reality really is and what it what it is close to divine reality to seek from within rather than to supposedly know everything and hence be able to make strong statements through your um, images uh fazal ji i was going to ask you a question that aap ye but ye keh rahi hain aapke iska jo process hai wo important hai and usko when a student starts to learn it wo itna mushkil hai usko apna apne aap ko dheema karna aur उसको पेंटिंग जो है वो इतना वक्त ले रही है कंप्लीट होने में तो इट इट गेट्स रियली फ्रस्ट्रेटिंग फॉर न्यू स्टूडेंट्स तो हाउ कैन दे यू नो कीप देम सेल्व मोटिवेटेड एंड बिकॉज इन द टाइम वी आर लिविंग ऑफ कोर्स आर फोकस इज मोर ऑन द एंड प्रोडक्ट दैट्स हाउ वी आर दैट्स द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी आर यूज टू तो it's going to it's it takes a, a long time to get into that kind of um, thinking i think ultimately when you want to finish a piece and you're comfortable with having finished a piece sometimes you need to do it but if you finish a piece and you think that you've achieved the end of the process that's where you have not learned anything 
but if you finish a piece and then you realize okay the next piece needs to be moving in a you know to at at a much more refined level or you can see the weaknesses in your earlier work and you can improve on those in that process move to piece that the um, internal quest is uh, is continuous it doesn't stop there so it doesn't really matter how many pieces you make as long as what you are learning from each piece is, is something new um, i think that when you do a pencil piece and in the beginning you're copying a master you already have an ideal form in front of you and you're trying to achieve that that standard so at least you have a model that you are trying to emulate it's when you are producing pieces of your own original um, sort of um, from your own vision personal vision that's where you're a little more um, independent and yet at the same time a little more blind right so uh, fazji why is this uh, that they we use only uh, the painting they are only two dimensional the why is it why don't we incorporate th three dimensionality into it the three dimensional uh, basically represents the physical world and miniature is a language of the mystical realm or you should say the imaginal realm or alam e malakut and it literally uses symbols so that you are not Uh, uh, deluded or um, confused by the fact that you are not looking at something from this physical world. And you have heard that the background is more important than the object. 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 The background is more important than the part of the painting so why is it that, why is it that the background is more important i think that when you focus on the form that you are drawing which is your main um, um symbol through which you are trying to communicate something that piece that symbol only will stand out in relationship to the environment around it miniature is very much about the environment around it every inch of the page is treated and it's never about focusing the viewer only on the symbol that you are at the center of the page but it is about the entire con uh, uh, the relationship between the spaces so i mean if you look at the miniature there will always be a order an inner and outer form so two dimensional space of the page is divided and this division is uh, uh, an allusion to the cosmic map where we are talking about the world of form which we call malakut or the imaginal realm and the worm of world of formlessness which lies beyond it so hence those just that one rectangular line that you make creates a visual division and then the world in which you are is the the more the physical realm so when the viewer is looking at the page he is looking beyond himself he is looking at himself in the physical presence seeking to communicate through the imaginal realm which is the inner inner picture and then beyond which is the form space and in the persian miniature they always use it uh, treated with gold dust so and what does the dust what really represents the divine reality consciousness so uh that is a very important aspect in all uh, traditional arts i i think miniature if you take if you think talk about miniature painting or calligraphy or um, even architecture that the void or the empty empty space that is more important so uh, that is incorporating the divine element into the work it's it's like that yes i was i was uh, going to ask you that uh, how does how does this uh, painting help you ha transform yourself uh, the laborious uh, hours of uh, your practice how does that transform so the you the first the first the first aspect which i talked about in the beginning is the slowing down the the need not to race through the activity to come to an end the whole thing is about the whole 
aspect of transcending time to move away from the clock to sit down and prepare your tools with a very um uh, genuine understanding how that tool is going to work for to perfect that tool before you begin working to when you pick up the tool to understand how it's going to be held in your hand how are you going to achieve different forms from it all of these things require you to slow down when we pick up a pencil and we write we never think about what we are how are we going to use it how are we going to actually write when you pick up draw nature painting or traditional art it's very important what you want from that tool and everybody will prepare their tools according to what and how they are going to it's a very first stage it's true even of a kalam you have to decide at which angle you want to um uh, the it's the slowing down is the process thinking about what you're going to do and how you're going to do it at the first stage is that you've been taught how to write with a pen and a pencil so you never think about it do you really think about what type of pen you use in the past i think people who wrote with inks ink pens really did think about what type of a tool they wanted to use but today it's like very um, redundant kind of thing you just pick up anything and use it to you obviously you're typing so you are not even holding the tool in your hand anymore and there is a very dif- distinct relationship between patterns formed in your brain with the way you use your tool and which fingers and your hand the organic movement of the hand and the eye being in unison so one of the earliest exercises you do is just a line exercise and all is doing is it's creating that rhythm between eye and hand which comes through practice and it requires patience it requires consistency sometimes you're bored you have to override all that you have to be able to sit acha and he has a question can you please put light on persian and other miniature styles that's what he said miniature styles ah that's his question what definitions or styles of miniature is miniature is persian followed by mohal followed by others of course the, then there's the turkish ottoman and the it's persian because it was started in persia under the mongols and then developed under the taimurids and reached its renaissance and then the mughals so it's a time line starting no i think he means the difference between 1600 i think he is asking about the difference in the styles rather than history it, it right now without images it's very hard to explain how it how the styles transit you would have to have at least three or four pictures showing you how it moves across time maybe we can do that another time theek hai and now there's another question from iman habib can you say, read the or should i read it out to you read it out Typically, what are the signs of a miniature master? Is "quote unquote" originality or "quote unquote" authenticity a marker, as in contemporary art? You know, I think that whether we are talking about um, originality or authenticity, I think contemporary art is a whole other um, subject. But to begin with, you have to understand this is a language. it has its own grammar it has its own structure it has its own forms or symbols which and how they are arranged again depends on what is the context because most of this art form evolved with a translation or interpreting text into an image today the modern contemporary painter isn't doing that he's using the forms he's using the grammars but he grammar but he has adapted it to a more uh, modern vernacular and uh, the context of what he's saying is also secular and more individual whereas if i have to look at miniature as a traditional art then it has to have some aspect of the divine element so if you are using the forms in a traditional context it comes under islamic traditional art but if you're using it in a more uh, personalized uh, self expression then it's contemporary art of course you might be using the 
फायदा जी जो राफे साहब का सवाल था उससे रिलेटेड एक सवाल मेरे दिमाग में था मैं सोची थी आपसे पूछूं वो ये कि हमारे हिंदुस्तान में तो पेंटिंग पर्शियंस के आने से पहले तो हो रही थी उसका नौयत भी फर्क थी उसका कंटेंट जो था वो वो भी रिलीजियस ही था ज़्यादा एंड उसमें फिनेस उस कदर उस तरीके से नहीं थी जिस तरह से पर्शियन पेंटिंग में नजर आती है हमें इवन शुरू की मिनीचर शुरू की पर्शियन मिनीचर की भी जो फिनेस है दैट इज़ वेरी रिमार्केबल सो व्हेन दैट इन्फ्लुएंस कम्स टू इंडिया एंड उसके बाद जो इंडियन मिनीचर पेंटिंग जो आज के लाती है वो भी आई थिंक इट ओज इट अलॉट टू द इन्फ्लुएंस मुस्लिम इन्फ्लुएंस सो हम हम इसको फिर क्या नाम दें इट्स इट शुड रियली बी कॉल्ड इस्लामिक फन इस्लामी फन मसवरी या इसको वट शुड इट बी नेम बिकॉज आई डोंट रियली लाइक टू टाइटल एट मिनीचर पेंटिंग सो इसको क्या कहना चाहिए it's very hard to say because you know there is become it, miniature painting has become a common currency like everybody uses the term it's written about in the same context so it's become generically used for any type of painting that is done in the same style as miniature painting to islamic or non islamic wali baat to tab hai jo uske context se content se relate karti hai तो जो जहाँ जब सब कॉन्टिनेंट में बात कर रहे हो तो जब पहाड़ी पेंटिंग में आ जाते हो तो देर इज़ अ लॉट ऑफ देर ओन बुद्धिस्ट सॉरी बुद्धिस्ट नहीं हिंदू आर्ट डिपेक्टेड इन इट तो यू दैट टाइप ऑफ पेंटिंग वुड नॉट कम अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ इस्लामिक एंड टूडे वेरी मॉडर्न पेंटिंग दैट इज बिंग डन डजेंट कम अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ इस्लामिक इट कम्स अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ मिनीचर पेंटिंग सिंपली बिकॉज ऑफ द स्टाइल यूज एंड द टेक्निक्स यूज सो इस्लामिक uh, अगर आप मुसवरी कहना चाहते हो तो इट्स वेरी डिफ इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू से हाउ टू कैटेगराइज इट टुडे आई गेस इफ यू आर स्टिल यूजिंग ट्रेडिशनल टेक्स्ट एंड यूजिंग एंड पेंटिंग फ्राम इंस्परेशन बेस्ड ऑन दैट टेक्स्ट यू विल कम अप विद वर्क विच विल रिफ्लेक्ट दसोटेरिक ट्रूथ्स एंड दैट वुड बी क्लोजर टू वॉट वी कॉल इस्लामिक आर्ट बिकॉज जो इंडियन मिनीचर पेंटिंग आज बना रहे हैं लोग उसकी तमाम टेक्निक्स वही हैं जो जाहिर है हम पाकिस्तान में इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं बट जो उसका कॉन्टेक्स है वो डिफरेंट है तो अब उसको फिर हिंदुस्तानी मिनीचर पेंटिंग कह देना चाहिए एंड जो हम कर रहे हैं उसको पाकिस्तानी मिनीचर पेंटिंग कह देना चाहिए क्या ये कन्फ्यूजन थी मुझे अब नजर नहीं आ रहा वो राफे का सवाल नजर आ रहा है against somebody who is um, creating their own personal language from being inspired by different styles and in today's era anything is possible i mean we we all do that in many ways please talk about the grid behind miniature painting this is rafe's question the structure the proportions based on geometry on which square root using is if you sit down and you you uh, start to um, uh, what is the word for it um, go deeper into a painting the same proportion applies so if you are making a grid on the basis of a root 2 to a root 3 that will be the formula you apply in subdividing that space ultimately it keeps subdividing the same proportion and ratio generally speaking we don't use the geometric or the mathematical proportion to create the the space that we use as the inner rectangle but if you are using a mathematical formula and if it's a root 2 formula that will be the formula you will keep subdivide space no matter how small you go it will remain on that same grid 
in a sense it lifts your vision beyond this world it does but what i was i think going uh, looking to hear from you is that when you are approaching a painting or you thinking about a painting there is a certain amount of research required having must at the very basic level that we were talking about we were talking about mastering the skill mastering the the understanding and the relationship with the tools but then we are looking at something that you've decided that you're going to paint you will need to have used gone back to something to be inspired by it to use that as the inspiration that is going to be you know shaping the image that you're going to finally produce so even that requires a uh, amount of reading research you have to think deeper than just thinking okay okay this is going to be my main theme and i'm going to develop a philosophy around it as i work do you need to need, know, need to know from beforehand okay what is it ultimately that you're going to be saying and how are you going to be saying it because you will be choosing your words i e your symbols and you're going to have to personalize those symbols to link them to a meaning that ultimately is conveyed to the viewer so there's a whole thought process that is behind the effort before you've even begun it so i mean at one level we were talking about when you are you are new come into the game and you are learning how to um you know be able to produce something at a certain level of skill and you have to learn that skill slowly step by step and ultimately it will give you results and if you cut corners you don't get the final result the picture is generally speaking below sub standard but if you want to you want to achieve the kind of standards that have been set, set by the masters in the past then you need to go through that rigorous procedure and that procedure has an impact on how you approach anything that you do because you i think that when you've been working in a in a field like this even if you're going to to uh, later apply it to anything you do for instance uh, travel cook um, raise children anything there is a certain amount of internal processing that you have become used to doing you you're used to thinking through why you're doing what you're doing and what the final product is going to be like and then that part of it that whole synthesis inside you that is going on that i think that is nourished by this kind of an art form and i think that when you are used to you know very detailed work very slow work whatever you approach you're not in a hurry to do it because you've been trained to slow down you've been trained to approach it with patience with an in a equilibrium i think it's that that quality of being centered being patient being grounded that becomes part of your nature that is something that this art imparts to you that's true i don't know if you've had any recourse to notice that about yourself when when you uh, don't really when you reach that point when you really start believing that ये वाकई जो मेरा रोज का बैठना और कंसंट्रेट करके काम करना ये ये प्रोसेस ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है बजाय इसके कि मैं सोचूं कि मुझे आखिर में क्या इससे मिलने वाला है व्हाट आई एम गेटिंग बाय वर्किंग ऑन डेली बेसिस दैट प्रोसेस इज मोर इम्पोर्टेंट तो आई मीन ये यहाँ तक पहुँचने के लिए भी काफी टाइम लगता है एंड वो तभी हो सकता है व्हेन यू स्टार्ट रियली अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट जो मटेरियल चीजें हैं उनकी इतनी इम्पोर्टेंस नहीं है जितना इंसान को अपना को अपने आप को ट्रांसफॉर्म करने की जरूरत है सो आई रियलाइज दिस थिंग एंड दैट्स वेरी वेरी प्रेशियस थिंग दैट आई हैव लर्न मेरे बहुत ही इट इट बीन अ वेरी एनरिचिंग एंड बहुत अच्छी सिटिंग रही है और प्रैक्टिस के और असल जो उसका अंदर मकसद है वो बड़ी वाजे तौर पर सामने आया है तो टाइम भी हमारा तकरीबन फोर्टी मिनट्स हो गए हैं Oh I think that mostly what I was trying to say is that having taught this process for the last 6 years for me personally the gains have been multifold but more on the internal level than it have been than they have been on just the act of teaching I think the learning curve has been for me 
seeing not just how everybody approached their work but also to see how those of you who persevered have finally able when were finally able to master the skill and the kind the transformative effect that it had on the persona of those people working and for me that was something that i wanted to highlight today that as a teacher i'm not just looking at the work change i'm looking at the person change and it's all inspiring thank you gosh shukriya fazidi thank you so much and alafis alafis